Good evening. You know, this is the third year of the TD uh, Why Forests Matter Roadshow, the fifth year of the TD and NCC partnership. And we've gone back and forth across the country over the last three years, telling stories about our love of forests and hearing stories about people's love of forests. But one of the themes that you've heard tonight, and it's been a reoccurring theme wherever we've gone in the country, is is this tension that exists in our modern life between trying to conserve and protect the natural world and coping with the demands of the modern world that we actually live in. So tonight I thought I'd tell you the story of a relationship. It's the relationship that's developed between TD and the Nature Conservancy, which started as a forest conservation relationship, but has evolved into a unique partnership that provides a real contribution to knowledge and has developed a tool that we hope will be helpful in making some of these complex decisions that we have to be making in our modern life. There's no question that when we started working with the Nature Conservancy of Canada, um, we were keen to protect critical forest habitat. At the time, TD had the idea that we wanted to raise awareness around paper use. And so we thought we'll protect critical forest habitat equivalent to the amount of paper that we use. And we did. Together, we've protected an area the size of a small country over the past five years. But as we got to know each other, we realized that collectively we had a unique set of skills that combined science, accounting, and economics. And we, got, we decided that we could together develop a new way of looking at conservation value. One that measured the financial value of not just the trees, but of the ecological services that trees and forests provided. And that's a concept called natural capital. Why did we do this? We wanted to do this because, as you've heard, nature loses out to development almost every time. And part of that reason is because in a development scenario, you can put a financial value on the costs and the benefits of the development. But in a conservation scenario, all we're often talking about is, look, it's the right thing to do, protect the forest. However, there are ways to look at the financial value of forests and of the services that forests provide. They're a lot more than the value of the trees. It includes the value of the absorbance of greenhouse gases, such as carbon dioxide, the production of oxygen, moderation of temperature, um, the, uh, the protection against flooding from the root systems. All of those ecological services, if not provided, would often have to be provided by engineering structures. So our thinking was that if we could put a financial benefit on some of these ecological services, we could, if you would, fight fire with fire, providing a tool that would inform better conservation and planning decisions. And together over the years, we have worked out a methodology that, that I think combines in a really great way science and economics. And we've applied this to a, a vast number of case studies, but of course we've first of all applied to the various critical forest habitats that we protected. And I just wanted to give you a sense of some of this. So we've heard a little bit about the Canoc property in Quebec. It's an example of the Great Lakes St. Lawrence forest region. Ecological services provided by this property are valued at $20,000 per hectare per year. Now that doesn't sound like a lot of money, but think of it being, uh, I, didn't, I can't read my own uh, slide here, but let's say it's 100 hectares. Now you're talking about $2 million a year. And let's say the forest is gonna be there for 100 years. I think you get what I mean. Um, there's incredible value in the protection of these areas of conservation through the ecological services that they provide. And we see similar values for different types of habitat. Here's the beautiful Bacchus Woods, a Carolinian mature forest. Um, the Bacchus Woods not only sequesters carbon, protects from flooding, absorbs air pollution, but also supports um, huge biodiversity. Again, valued at about $20,000 per hectare per year. 
And lastly, an example of the beautiful boreal forest that crosses our country here in Newfoundland, um, where you have such a diversity of mature trees, of, of smaller, fast-growing trees, and of wetlands um, that, are val that can be valued at about $26,000 hectare, per hectare per year. And we haven't only just worked on, on uh, co conservation areas. A lot of the work that we've done has been on urban forests, just as you heard Richard Lowe speaking about. The reality is that we're sitting here, like most Canadians, living in cities, and our cities are getting bigger and bigger. We're choosing to live there. And the quality of life in cities is hugely determined by green space. Now, all of us, I'm sure, in our neighborhoods here, certainly in mine, are faced with uh, issues around should we develop our our local um, excess school playgrounds into condos, oh, there's going to be great tax value there. Well, the work that we've done through Natural Capital shows the huge value of protecting and maintaining our existing green spaces and actually argues for growing. So in Toronto alone, $81 million each and every year of benefits of flood protection, of uh, temperature moderation, of carbon sequestration, sequestration provided by our green spaces. So together, working together, bringing usual and unusual skills together, we've been able to create a tool that can be used right across the country in many different settings, um, a tool that allows us to measure like for like when faced with those complex financial decisions. And I'm pleased to say this is a tool that partly thanks to our work is now being picked up more and more, not only in Canada, but right across the world. So when we think about a partnership, together we went from a sponsorship to a partnership, from counting to accounting, creating value and knowledge. That's the power of collaboration, and that's what we need to leave the world for our children now and in the future. Thank you.